It's raining outside? Yep, just started storming. Oh, what the fuck? Son of a bitch. What does raining mean? Raining means when water comes from the sky. You think we should just cancel the show tonight? Why, because it's raining at Mark's house? Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like oh, a pretty good reason. I just feel bad for Mark. It's raining outside. I don't think the rain impacts Mark either way. Like I don't. Know <clears> I'll feel bad if my electricity. Blah, 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 electricity. You know what? Say that again. <laughs> so I'll have to turn on every fucking thing again, like my lights, my camera, my computer, my TV. Like oh my god. Your electricity. Hey, like lilici, lilici. I had one button to turn everything on at once, or fucking clap on. Dude, I wish what? women had one button to turn on. They do got one button. It's called the clitoris. Wow. The what? What's that? It's a little bean-sized skin, piece of skin. It's so sneaky, though. I can never really put my finger on it. So, did you guys get the email of the review that dildo mod? Oh, yeah. my God. I want to review that so bad. I've I been hope actually they... testing it for three months now. <laughs> on yourself? <laughs> I have. I have it inside me right now, actually. Yeah. I've put it in every hole to try and vape it. Yeah, when we were at the last vape expo, I was bent over the bed. That's why Mark left, because I had it in my ass, and he was vaping out of it. He's like, bend over, let me get a pull on that thing. <laughs> now, now I'm actually thinking about responding. You know what? Send it. <laughs> it would yeah. be kind of fun, wouldn't it? I'd make a funny video. Yes, it would. Yeah. I think it's about that time. What do yeah. you guys think? Let's do this. It's go time. in the house the vape team episode 120 and uh yeah we're back we are back thursday night in the fucking no house fucking. somebody is uh somebody's looking postured and ready for the show the man that always gets an introduction mikey motherfucking vapes <laughs> <What's up? laughs> um, <The> iron lung <laughs> Dude, it could get out of control. I have like a list of like 30 different names for you. So, yeah. Um, anyway, welcome to the show. Also, our special guest of the evening, our junior member, the heart and soul of the vape team, the man that brings the passion, thumbs up guy, VN sweaty hat, the guitar player that never plays that guitar. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Thumb and the Bum, Mark Fappin' Vegan. Good morning. Good morning. Are you just getting up? You just getting yes, up? just getting up. Very nice. Uh, Thank you. you just go to sleep in the afternoon and just wake up and do a show. Yeah, you got it. It's the life of a superstar, as they say. Yep. <laughs> do you have your servants cook you a nice hot meal before the show starts, or dinner? No, it doesn't work like that. No. I actually have to get up and get my own food. Now, when you go to the kitchen, do you ever cook yourself dinner? Mm, not lately anymore. I mean, do you know how to cook? Do you, would you, like, yes. make yourself, like, chicken breast and, like, stuffing or... Yeah? Mm-hmm. Who taught you how to cook? I taught myself how to cook because my mom was a horrible cook. So I had to watch the Food Network as a kid. Hold up, I'm getting a phone call from out of this country and it says coming union. 
Ooh, you better answer it. Answer it. Craig Schultz Jeez. just donated twelve dollars. He said, "G Schultz in the motherfucking house, motherfucking house. icon picture." Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, Mike, how about you? Do you know how to cook? Oh. Uh-huh. Do you know how to cook food? Yes. Are you a good cook? Um, actually, a short order cook. I used to. Yeah. Yeah. What are we talking? Like fucking Denny's or? All in diners. A Greek diner. Yeah, regular diners. What the fuck? This person is calling me again. Let's take. Let's the take. Phone. Should I take the phone call? Yeah. Let's, let's take it. Okay, let's see who it is. Yeah, I'm gonna have some coffee and just sit here and listen. Hello. Who this? You from Ch- from China? What? From where? <laughs> Watch me like an important company. <laughs> What 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 company are you from? Of you from vaping group? No, what what company are you from? Ding dong, Mark. <laughs> what? I'm gonna mute Mark. I don't think I you can get my this. phone number. Invite her on the vape team. Hmm. Well, guys. A little behind the scenes action from Mikey. Oh, you Oops. sent me, you sent me the mech mod. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> it's in a glass. It's in a, glass. It's in a fake Ray Ban glasses case. <laughs> what happened? I, right now, I'm live. I'm live on YouTube. Everybody is watching us at this conversation. Yes. When you, when you do a review. Like, can you put her on speaker? I have, I have it. I, I received it. Don't worry. Yes. Hmm. Yes, I have it. Thank you very much. Have a beautiful evening or morning or afternoon. You have a cute voice, by the way. You know that? Yo, Mark. You're welcome. These have Chinese ladies love Thank Mike. You. Bye-bye. <laughs> it seems like it. Dude, I, the... Uh, if you want to know, first, I cannot tell you how long it's going to take me to do the review. You have to answer this question for me. What are you wearing? Here we go. Of course I will review it, but I just want to know what you're wearing tonight. That's a sexual attack. That is a sexual attack. Oh, you don't have to be nervous. Don't worry. Everything will be all right. I know we're nothing right now. Dude, okay. I could see her, him slipping some okay. pills into a cran vodka and handing it off to her right now. <laughs> oh, that's fucked up. Uh, anyway, let's continue with the show. Why don't we at least give her a shout out at what's in, on the show? Let's ta- open that little container. And All take right, I'll show mic. everybody what, what the, the young uh, lady sent me. Yeah. Uh, came in this thingy here. The purse? Yeah, it's... right. My <laughs> wife, when she saw this, who sent you sunglasses? You gotta look sad. Like it's not sunglasses. Relax. Open it up. Wow, that's kind of cool. It's in a weird a mech holder, basically. Yeah. It's like a mech purse. Let's say some sort of important documents would be in there. There we go. It looks pretty. Yeah. Okay. How does it feel? It feels nice. What's the brand? Kung Pao! Mark, I swear to God. (laughs) It's got for battery adjustment. (laughs) Giancarlo is fucking writing in Chinese out there in chat. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, You just wrote, Mike has a nice trouser package. It's pretty nice. Actually, they sent me a picture of it. They asked me if I want to review it. So what I did was I sent the picture to Phenom, and I told him, what do you think of that? He's like, dude, that thing is awesome. So I was like, all right, (laughs) I'll review it. But yeah, it's fucking gorgeous. I have no clue what company this is from or whatever. It's got to be in my email somewhere. But yeah, pretty nice. I'm not sure if it's available anywhere. Don't know. I don't even know the name of it. So, well, if you if you ever talk to her again, thank her for ch- checking in on the the vape team. Yeah, she actually had a cute voice. Anyway, anyway, well, I think it's that time. It's the weekly boom. All you can oh. vape buffet time. Mark Fagan's going to lead tonight off with a little buffet action of his own that he hasn't prepared whatsoever. 
Take it away, Mark. Knock it out of the park. Um, let's see. I got the Battle Star, the camouflage Battle Star with the uh, Churchill RTA sitting on top there. Inside there, I have. I'm gonna need you to pay close attention, Mike. The Cloud Chemist, uh, Serial Science. Woo-hoo. I also have another Battle Star. What? This one's the orange one. Yes, I am Battlestar famous. Uh, on top there, I got the new, don't say it, the combo RDA from iJoy. And cornbread pudding. Boop, 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 boop. Inside there, I got the Purge Mods truck with the reload on top of there. Inside. I got some of the Strawberry Jam Monster, which is sitting right here. And I got the Boxer Squonk, with, which is using the D-Pro, which is actually have a battery and juice in it. Does and it got the Squonk Arm- pin in it? Yes, it does. The Armageddon Squonk with the Peerless sitting on top there. It also has a battery with juice in it. And that's it. Yeah, that's it. Take it away, Mr. Herb. Yo, I, that might be the most detailed and organized and correct buffet that you've ever given us as a guest on the show. I'm like, oh. Mike is speechless over there. Look at him. I know. Up in my game here. No corrections, nothing. I was actually practicing half the day. You were becoming a fine young man. You know that? Maybe I'll be a member one day. You're becoming a nice, fine young man. Anyway. What am I vaping on this evening? Uh, what am I vaping on? I am vaping on the Boxer 2700 Squonk with a little bit of the uh, prototype of the drop RDA that I've been testing for the past couple days. This is the newest version of the drop. Uh, I am also vaping on this brand new billet box that I purchased with an Exoset RBA section in it. And, uh, the signature tip strip tip. I think I vaped this last week on the show, but I put the RBA section in before the show tonight, and I've been really enjoying these billet boxes. I want to use this a lot in Miami. I'm also vaping on the Archon 2700 Squonker with the Vape Team Custom Edition. This is the Elite TVC edition of the Archon, and on that I have the Dead Rabbit from Heathen that I've been squonking on. And uh, what else am I vaping on? Oh. I picked up another one of these beauties right here. This is the Funky 160. I'm not really sure how many watts it has, but it's the Funky 160W. And on there, I have another prototype of the drop. And I'm also vaping on juice tonight. I've been actually vaping this chocolate pudding from Country Clouds. Chocolate pudding from hitthatjuice.com. I'm also vaping on some blueberry something. Brian, turn up your volume. People are saying, fuck. Or talk louder. One of the okay, other. Okay, blueberry something from adoreeliquid.com. Beautiful. There we go. I'm going to have an aneurysm. And I'm also vaping on the Oni. The Oni from Asmodus. This little 20 something hundred milliamp hour mod package deal with a tank. Subpar. That's all I got to say. I'm just, it's a starter kit, I guess, but it's just, I don't know. I haven't really been enjoying it. I'm going to put that out there. Um, Other than that, anything else, Brian? Anything else? How now, brown cow? Take it away, Mikey motherfucking vapes. Hey, no, dang. Uh, 2700 uh, Boxer Squonker. I got the D-Pro RDA on there. And then here I am vaping on some... Coil spill, R K O I coil spill. There you go, vaping on that. Also vaping on the Haran 218 with the uh, iDroy combo or DTA. And here I have some cheese Danish, raspberry cheese Danish hometown vapor.com. 
IPv Eclipse with the OBS engine. In here, I have some Raspberry, oh, wrong bottle. Uh, we had to bust this one open. Some Raspberry Custard, RoyalVapeProducts.com. Joe motherfucking Turner. Uh, also vaping on the Boss 3000, the green edition, the Traveler mod with the rabbit, that rabbit RDA on top of it. In here, we are vaping on some cornbread pudding. And what else are you vaping on? I'm vaping on also a Funky 160. Funky 160. Does 120 watts. Uh, on top of it, I have the reload, <laughs> the reload RTA, and in there I am vaping on some uh, kaleidoscopic clouds, looking glass, and for the finale, Pangea RTA. Was that a drum roll? Yes, <laughs> that was actually the licking the clit sound that I make. That's what it sounds like. <laughs> yeah, I figured you thought that. With the beat up. Aegis, Aegis, Aegis mod, Aegis. And in here, I'm vaping on some Camelot Reserve. Exclusive Reserve. Did I say Camelot Reserve? Camelot, Camelot. Exclusive Reserve. CamelotEliquids.com. That's it. Take it away, Mark. Take it away, Brian. <laughs> Well, I think I just turned my volume up a little bit, so hopefully that's a little bit better. Um, yeah, so let's talk for a minute about uh, let's talk about the dead rabbit, shall we? Hold on, let me vape. Mark, take it away. Hi, what's up, guys? What's hey, up? Mark. What's going on? What do you want to talk about? <laughs> Rabbit's an awesome fucking okay, RDA. Yep. Not bad. Pretty good. I like it. I like it too. Yeah. I've been vaping it in squonk mode. Mm -hmm. It squonks really nice. Airflow's nice and smooth. Flavor's good. Flavor's real good. Yeah. Um. Yeah. What do you What do you prefer more for squonking RDA, the D Pro or the Dead Rabbit? Mark, Mike. You know what? Uh. I haven't used the Dead Rabbit to tell you just in squonky mode. Uh, I've been using the D Pro. I'm actually running two of them. I like the D Pro. You ain't got the D Pro, Brian? I do not have a D Pro. Oh, it is fucking awesome. Yep. Coil art. What's what's the problem here? Why don't Brian? Why doesn't Brian have a, a D Pro? I don't know. Jesus, this is the, like one of the best RDAs. Do you guys think that the D Pro is the best squonking RDA? Because I know that, uh, and speaking of the Pulse, the Pulse 24 released this week. I think Brad's Vapor just got them in today for sale. Uh, the Pulse 24, I've been hearing nothing but good things. Mike seems to think it's wonderful. Mark? I think, I think uh, the Pulse 24 beats the D Pro because of the airflow. Because I could cut down the Pulse to the same airflow as the D Pro. And if I want to, I could put more airflow. I like the ability to be able to have more airflow. With the D-Pro, you're limited when it's wide open, but wide open, not bad, so it's good. Uh, someone asked, Dead Rabbit or Cosmonaut? Dead Rabbit. Cosmonaut is garbage compared to the Dead Rabbit. I never liked the Cos. I have the Cosmonaut. I actually have two Cosmonauts here. It's not the greatest of RDAs. O-rings suck on it. Yeah, I've had the Dead Rabbit on the uh, Archon all week. And as far as uh, the reason why it works really well for squonking is because it has the uh, really tight O-rings and you can just fill it up. And since the wicks are so long, it sucks the juice up into the wicks and you don't get any leaking problems. I yeah. think the airflow position at the top, they're not. it's not really top. It's like side top. Yeah. You know? And the reason why the flavor is so banging is because the coils are so close to the opening where your mouth is. Yep. There you go. It's simple. And it works. But the only thing with the dead rabbit is uh, if you have it, either, whether you're dripping in it or squonking in it, and you've filled it up, and you decide to take that top cap off, you're going to leak. 
It's already happened to me by just by dripping, by removing a tire, but just to look inside it, forgetting that I over dripped it in there because there really isn't no juice well. I noticed RM Vapes says the D-Pro sucks. I'm wondering, RM Vapes, why does the D-Pro suck? Yeah. I'm curious to know your opinion on why it sucks. Yep. I think it's an awesome RDA. I can't figure out why anybody would say it sucks, unless they don't like a tight airflow. Yeah, that would be the only thing. If it's the airflow is too restricted for you, but that wouldn't that wouldn't mean it sucks. It just means it's not really your style of airflow. You know who hates uh, D Pro RDAs? People that vape 120 watts. I think with big coils, it's not meant for that. I don't know. You know but I'm not getting. I'm getting a great vape off it. And that's what. That's one thing that uh, Phil is talking about today on ST show about reviewing products that are not really his style of vaping and how he doesn't review products like that because he can't really give a good can't really give him a good review if it's not his style of vaping if he can't enjoy it then how can he really review it Which I, think was a really... I, I think that's kind of the hard part like there's fanboy feelings that we all have about certain brands and certain products that we might have a, a connection with or that we like to vape and as a reviewer you're you're supposed to be sort of an expert on all things vape you know and uh it's hard to not allow your your passionate side because people feel that that's why they watch your channel they want to see that excitement and you know i'm sure you guys get comments all the time from people saying i could tell you really like that mike because there's that little that little glimmer in your eye that little smirk or smile you can feel that you love something versus like something and mm -hmm. that doesn't mean it's not good like i'll give you an example so this this oni right I got this in the mail. This doesn't suit any of my needs for vaping whatsoever. 40 watt coil in there. It's, you know, it's a solid little tiny. I mean, it reminds me of a mod from two years ago, right? Yeah. But if I just quit smoking and I bought it, it's easy to fill. The coils are easy to change. The flavor's good. It's easy to charge. And it's simple. So maybe it's a really good device for the right person at the right price. Yep. You know, there's a lot of variables that go into devices, and just because you don't want to vape it doesn't mean it sucks. Exactly. People need to have their uh, their mind open to others also, you know, how they would vape. So you have let's, to have that variable in there. Let's talk also a little bit about, because we were talking about it before the show started tonight, about products that are inspired by other products, you know, uh, or similar looking, I mean, how many mods have we gotten, right? That have a square box, that have a button, that have panels that come off. Yeah. You know what I mean? Does that mean it's a clone or that it's copying someone? I don't think so. That's like saying a two door sports car is a copy of another two door sports car. I mean, it has four wheels, two doors, you know? So th this is a clone of this, right? Right. It's... No. Uh, Right. You know, you know what I'm saying, I know right? what you're saying, right. Well, with, with, this, with this, the Therion was a clone of, uh, what's it called, the K before it. It looks a lot like the, that beautiful, remember that beautiful blue mod we had on the throwback show? Yeah. Which was, uh, what the fuck was that high-end mod that everybody wanted that had the little the little clamshell that pulled off? The, it's named after a guy. Michael? No. no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Carlos Creations. Yeah. Wasn't there something from Carlos Creations that yeah, had the uh, clamshell? Yeah, I can't remember the name of it now. But I think everything, things that work usually are inspired by uh, other companies get inspired and they come out with something similar. Hmm. I've seen like fucking 15 decks that look like the D-Pro so far. You know what I mean? Similar. Everything is a clone of something. That's yeah. the way it is. It's when you start to do exact clones and you start to do exact measurements and you start to have the same logos or branding or say there's an innovative feature on something and you know you, you put it out because you saw a picture of something you know what i mean that's bullshit so like i did my review today for the pangea rta and people were saying that uh why didn't i call it a clone i should have been hard on them for that if that's the case i should have been hard on the manta rta that looks just like the reload or i should have been hard on everything i review we we'll call it a copy of something else yeah, the Pangea is not a clone. It's kind of pointless, you know. Yeah. Or how about how many how many how many uh, eighteen six fifty tube mechs do you have? 
Yeah. I mean, give me a fucking break. They're all. Oh, they got a button on the bottom. Hmm. Five ten. Hybrid. Inspired by and cloning. Exactly. Yeah. Now, if somebody makes one of these that splits in the middle, that has the exact same shape and curvature, the exact same spring and dimensions for the, you know, for the contacts, uh, the same threading, the same air venting, then you start saying, well, that's a fucking clone, you know? And then the question is, if it doesn't have a logo on it, is it wrong? No. I don't know. It's, it's there's a lot of gray area there. Yep. Yeah. So, so uh, I think Adam says people just want to hate. That's the way it is. There's a lot of fucking haters on it. Sometimes I fall for the bait and I start commenting. Yeah. In their comments, which I shouldn't, you know. But uh, whatever. Jason Murray said that he got the drop on Fast Tech today for nine ninety nine. So congratulations on that. That's where I got mine from too. Yep. Yep. Uh, someone asked in the chat. Uh, what did they ask? What do I prefer better, the Dead Rabbit or the Icon RDA? They are Ooh. totally different. I, I'm going to give my honest truth because uh, a lot of people think that, uh, I don't know, whatever they think, they think. But uh, I'll say I like the Dead Rabbit better than the Icon. There you go. I'm being honest. That's all I do. Next. <laughs> Mark? Yeah, I think, I think everyone's going to be different when it comes to clones. Like some people are going to think, you know, if it looks like the the atom, if they both look the same, they're a clone. But other people are like, if it doesn't use the same logo, that it's not a clone. I think everyone's definition of clone is going to be different. Yeah. To me, if it doesn't use the same, if it doesn't use the logo, then hey, it's not a clone. If it doesn't steal their logo, their artwork. And it has at least one different feature to it. I'm going to assume it's not a clone. That's like taking out how many RTAs were produced that looked like the Griffin. Yeah. Or how many RDAs looked like the Kennedy or the the tsunami? You know. How many how many fucking RDAs used the Velocity deck when that came out? Exactly. There's still this RDTAs that. This is a clone of a Kennedy. Exactly. So I would say if it doesn't use their logoing or branding, then it's probably not a clone. And they just slightly improved on the. I will say this. Holes or something hey, like that. Stan Rikers, if you're stealing someone's idea, it's a clone. That's the whole point, Stan. Everything is a clone because everything is inspired by something that's out already. The engine is a clone. It's got a velocity build deck in it. It's a clone build deck. If you want to put it that way. So everything is a clone of everything. Every box mod, every tank that's out there, everything is a clone. Well, I think we're, there's a couple things you can look at. You can look at the build deck on a device, if that's copying something. You can also look at the aesthetics, like the look of it, or the airflow shape. How about the airflow shapes of things? You know what I mean? We've seen a thousand devices that use you know Velocity or uh, Mutation X airflow, Goon, Goon 1.0 airflow. Now you're seeing Goon 2.0 airflow. Uh, it's just the way it works. Nope. Oh, Phenom just texted me. Let's see what he texted me. The only thing that's a little bit frustrating is when you see... Oh, I'll give you a, a great example. So you have this brand new dot mod RDA that has that single screw for the center post, right? Mm -hmm. We see pictures of it. It's gorgeous. Now, if a company like Coil Art or somebody else comes out with that design before dot mod even releases it on the market, I think that's fucked up. Now, is it a clone? Is it a copy? Yeah, it's a copy. Do they have the right to do it if they're faster getting it out there? Yeah, I guess they do. But I think it's wrong. You know what I mean? I think there should be some sort of ethics in business, shouldn't there be? Yeah. But what if... What if... Uh, Dot Mod had the idea first? Or uh, Coilart yeah, had the idea first? Uh, what if they had the idea at the same time? Like, didn't you say that you and Heathen kind of had the same idea? Just, you know... Sure. You know what I mean? What if they were also designing a single post RDA? I mean, it could have possibly happen. It could happen. It's totally different. That's but, why know. it's hard to take a stance and say for sure because you don't have proof. Unless you have proof, it, you know, you just got to sort of roll with it. But that's why I, companies a lot of times rush stuff out to market and don't fully test and fully, you know, go over things because they're afraid of somebody taking their idea or, or somebody else coming out with that idea. You know? If someone said if the engine, if the 
Pangea was designed by somebody else, we'd be calling it the Engine V2. If you actually sit and watch the review, I actually do side by side showing the engine with it. I even said it looks just like the engine. It's it's got the same familiarization when you look at the engine with the Pangea. That's just because of the way the top fill is in the airflow, though. They're all set up, but they're not the same RTA. They're different. Different build deck in here. Size is different. Airflow, more airflow on this. Different drip tip. Not the same. Different drip tip. Yeah. You know? So. I would say fuck what everybody says. Just go based on your own opinion. If you think it's a clone, then don't buy it. If you That's don't think it. it's a clone, go ahead and buy it. My favorite saying is nobody's putting a gun to your head to buy it. Just don't buy it. We've been having a lot of discussions, and sometimes I think we should refrain. And we've all, we're all guilty of it. I know Mark gets into battles sometimes, and I know Mike does too. You know, as reviewers, sometimes like price. The, the, the feeling of spending money out of your pocket if it's a product you're reviewing doesn't come into play when you're reviewing something. And a lot of times in the chats, in like the Facebook group for the vape team, people will bring up price and then bitch about reviewers not paying for the mod that they get and then complaining that they don't have the ability to, to be honest about it because they didn't pay for it. You know what I mean? What did yeah. you type today, Mike? What that I've spent over... I've said this so many times. Yeah. What, that all the devices that I buy on my own... I spent over ten thousand dollars in vape gear. You know? Yeah. Is that what you're talking about? That yeah. answer? Yeah. No. Yeah. So I can't say I don't buy shit. I buy shit too. And I think that if you honestly look at a product and review it for its strengths and weaknesses, I don't care if you buy it or not, you can still assess it and talk about pros and cons either way. You know? Yeah, I just like I just review the product. I don't review the price tag. No. The, the viewer, it's up to them if they think it's worth it or not. I'm not sitting there debating the price tag because something may be affordable, affordable to me, but someone else maybe think it's a completely yeah. rip-off. As an adult, you should know what you can afford and what you cannot afford. If you can't afford it, then you can't afford it. Right. Hang it's out like, with Phenom for a weekend and tell me about how you feel. Exactly. Like all Phenom shit, I can never afford none of that shit. Yep. And I think it's crazy for buying half the shit, but that's what he can afford. That's what he likes, and so be it. But I give you the pros, I give you the cons, you take those pros and cons, then you decide for yourself if you think it's worth it or not. If you don't, then you move on to the next product. That's it. You can sit there and debate price all day long and still never get, you know. I mean, you could also debate at, at the other end of things that things that are too low priced are bad for the industry, bad for workers, bad for profit margins, bad for stores, bad for, I mean, there's there's arguments on every side of this thing when it comes to business and price and, you know, the race to the bottom mentality that happens, especially when you have this global economy where, you know, other countries are willing to sell products at such a fraction of, of the costs for them to make it and make a lot less profit, but sell a lot more units. Um, I don't know. I know that the high end companies, the businesses that sell things for a few hundred dollars, are struggling like crazy. They don't sell them the amount of units. They don't have as many customers. They have to deal with customer service. They have to deal with usually being in the country that they're selling them. It's not as easy as it looks, and they're not. You know, I don't know any person that runs a high-end mod company that's living on a fucking boat in the Bahamas. You know what I mean? Yeah. Usually, they're just that's just a hobby for them. Yep. They have a job already. They go from vape expo to vape expo. They usually travel in a caravan. And they're trying to make money just like the rest of us are by going to work and making something they're passionate about. You know? Lower prices are good for saving smokers' lives. There's plenty of those out there. There's so many devices that are cheap in price. But, you know? I also think a lot of people, and I think everyone that watches our shows are in different locations or different positions in their career in the, how much income they have, if they have multiple kids, if they have a big house that's too expensive and they're living paycheck to paycheck. Not everybody that buys something for 100 or $200 that decides that it's bad after they get it has that much regret. Right. Like it just like goes in the drawer and they don't care. Like it's not, they're not living paycheck to paycheck like you might be. So it's not that hard on them. It's just a hobby like any other hobby. I mean, dude, you ever meet anybody that has a boat, Mike? Yeah. A lot of fucking money. A lot of money. 
a lot yeah. of money. And you might think to yourself, that's a waste of money. It's overpriced. You know, storing it, winterizing it, all the repairs, the the canvas, the the teak on the wood, cleaning the engine, all that stuff is super expensive. It's a waste of money. But to that person, they fucking love it, and it's their passion. Yeah. It's their hobby. Exactly. You can't judge shit like that. I have a friend that that races uh, remote control, like super expensive remote control cars. Dude, he gets a track built in his backyard. He buys every engine from like all around the world. He gets custom shells that are like six hundred bucks a piece. They're made out of like space aged material. I think it's a fucking waste of money. Yeah. But he loves it, and I respect that. Yep. We, we all have our stuff. Mark is into fucking high end porn. Hell yeah. All his porn accounts and all these things he pays monthly things and the tokens and the lube and the supplies he buys. I'm in debt from Chatterbait. I know you are. <laughs> I have a bill collector from Chatterbait calling me every day. <laughs> if anybody uh, is interested, you can find Mark on Chatterbait to help him out with those issues. Uh, Fagan, what is it? Vaping Fagan the Bear? Yes. <laughs> so there you go, Vaping Fagan the Bear on Chatterbait. Anything new and exciting, guys? I know the three of us got the same uh, thing this week, the boxers. Yes, Squonker. let's talk about the Squonker boxers. Yeah. Well, I have the original 18651, and I also have the the 2700 version, and I've been waiting for the 2700 version big time. Look at Mark. He's so on top of things. Oh, yeah. You can talk while I show it. Okay. You'll notice that the side has that switch there. And if you put your finger into the switch and push upward, it locks it so you won't pocket fire. If you push it down and then press it in, it fires the device. How do you feel like the response of the button is? It's it's responsive. It just it has a lot of travel to it. It's just like the original one. It's like a lever, kind of, so you can see it has a lot of throw, which is not an issue. What but do you have on there? The, the reload? This is the D-Pro. The D-Pro, that's right. And me and Tom were kind of talking about this yesterday, so I was talking about how the battery, you know, it's kind of loose inside of here. And I realized the way you're supposed to do this is the, I don't know, but the, you put your battery in the door. Yes. I didn't know that. You pop your battery in the door, and then you pop it onto the mod, and that's... Works much know. better. Yeah, it works much better. Nope. Yeah. Cool. They spent a ton of time doing the engineering on these things, and one of the reasons for the new door is the um, the capability of this thing for once the 21700 batteries come out on the market, they're going to be compatible. Yep. So, Mark, put, show them where those two prongs are. On yeah, the inside. The, these prongs right here? No, the ones that are made out of the material the shell is made out of in the battery compartment. No? Other right hand? Right here. Right here, Mark. Look, look. Can you see my screen? Yep. Right here. There's prongs? Yeah, those those oh. actually flex. Oh, I did not know that. And what those do <clears throat> is they, once you have a bigger battery, which the 21700 is a bigger diameter, it when you go to close the door, it'll push those in so that the battery can fit. Oh. Which is really smart and forward thinking. That is pretty cool. Yep. But it's nice. I mean, it's, it doesn't feel much bigger in the hand. It actually feels better for me. It feels just like the perfect size. I yeah. actually like the size of this one better. It just right. feels nicer in the hand. Plus the 2700 batteries is a no-brainer. People were asking if the... Uh, if the 20, <coughs> seven, 2700 batteries last longer than the VTC 5As. Oh, yeah. 100% most definitely. It's noticeably different. <laughs> King Vapes wants to know what gang Mark is in. Uh, Latin Kings. Thank you. Nice. I did get the, uh, the Armageddon Squonker, which is kind of the same, kind of different from the Boxer. I mean, they look, of course, much different, but the concept and the internals are kind of the same. Buttons are totally different. 
construct this one's 3D printed, this one's made of Delrin, but and then I also got a haven't used it yet, but the um I want to say Centurion, the guys that made that Wotofo or that gaming mod. Yep. I got this one. All gold plated contacts on the inside. This one's made of wood. Someone said there was wiring in that. Is that true? I don't know. I didn't look at it yet, but it looks like there's a wire right there. I don't know if that's a wire or if it's just it's the connection for the for the negative contact for the battery. Yeah, so that, or the po- or the positive. Oh yeah, yeah, I see what they did. Yeah. It doesn't loop around the way it doesn't like any of these other squonkers. Yeah. Got the wire make. So that would mean it's not mechanical, it's unregulated, right? So that's the tricky part. What do you consider that? Because it's got a wire instead. But inside the wire is the same material that this, <coughs> that this, uh, what's it called, might be made out of. You know, the, a metal piece. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess the, the switch is mechanical, so, I don't know. Semi-mechanical, Is that I guess? spring? Is that a spring switch? Uh, it feels like one, yeah. So everyone's been asking for an affordable squonking mod, and uh, that should be affordable, right? Yeah, I don't know how much they are, but I know having... <laughs> Excuse me. And I think they're, I'm pr- most certain, under $100. I could have swore they were like $68, but I could yeah. be wrong. That's what I heard, 60 to $70 for it. Yeah, so there you go. What does the bottle feel like? Uh, it's a little, it's uh, not like a boxer or anything else. It's one of the regular. One of the old school. Yeah, plastic ones. Yeah, you could always upgrade that, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'll show you guys. I just got my, I uh, got some new bottles that I bought. From... Yeah, I got some black bottles. I wanted to just check them out, so I got it off the 3F8. Wow. But I think it's a little bit too black. You're not going to really be able to see the liquid. I haven't put liquid in it to see if I could see it. The cool yeah. thing about squonking, though, Mike, is that when you get to that last squeeze, you can hear the air pop. It goes... Yeah. Sort of like a pussy fart. Mm-hmm. So I got a couple of these things. <laughs> Don't start. Uh, there's like a dry pussy fart that's like, and then there's a wet one. It's like, I didn't do it. I anyway, did not. Mike, what do you think of the funky, eighty watt? The funky eighty watt. What? There's another one. What do you think? Have you played with it at all? Have you put a battery in it at all? Yeah, I've been vaping it for I don't know, almost a week now. I've had it for last week on a show too. Did you? It feels it feels underpowered. Did you put it in powerful mode? No, in standard. But I but I know what it should vape this tank at standard, and it just feels underpowered to me. I've been vaping this thing at the same wattage that I have my mini conversion two in powerful mode, mm-hmm. and in powerful mode it feels like the mini conversion two power, which yeah. I think feels powerful. Yeah, it doesn't feel doesn't give me that. Power. I mean, I know this uh, tank. I vape it around seventy-five watts and other stuff. I mean, I'll put it like. Let's see. I, I just had it on uh, at seventy-five watts, mm-hmm. and now I just took a hit at eighty-two watts. Feels the same thing. I'll put it uh, ninety watts, eighty-seven point nine. I felt the same to me. Switch the ramp up, Mike. Hold the two buttons together. Now I got it at 95 watts. I never vape this setup at 95 watts. Oh, wait a minute. I think it... I think it's a ramp up. I think it's set up to give me lower and then it boosts. That's what I think it is. I just felt that it took a longer hit there. Yep, and, and it felt- kicked up. So that's why I said switch to powerful. All right, so press the up and down button. Press the up and down buttons at the same time. It'll flash. The power mode will flash, then hit it to the right. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, no. Yeah. Press the up and down buttons, then push the fire button, and it'll drop down to the mode flash. All right, powerful. And then hold the two buttons again to get together, and then it'll lock it in. Yeah. 
Was there like a uh, ramp up time curve thing on this? I haven't really messed around with it. That powerful actually feels much better. It's much seven, better. Eight, yeah. Yeah. I've been keeping it at that the whole time. Oh. Yeah. So that means to tell you the truth, then it's under. It is underpowered. Yeah, so. I don't think it's accurate. I think that the battery life is awesome. I think that once you learn that powerful actually gives you probably what the normal should be, then you know for the money with having the panels that are pretty, it's just a good value mod. Yeah, the, it's not perfect. The board, everything, the screen, it's gorgeous, very, right? Not the board itself, but the screen. Yeah, it's real nice. Yep. Um, I guess ST bought one of those today. Do you guys have a preference of your favorite thirty millimeter RTA? Uh, the Aromamizer. 30 millimeter? I love the Aromamizer 30 millimeter. Mine's the, uh, the whatchamacallit? Oh, the Omec at the moment. Omec? Omec. Omec. The I, I don't like anything bigger than like 27 or 28. I, I prefer 24 or 25 for me personally. Yeah, oh. 28 30 is kind of big for a lot of people. Yeah. All right, uh, we have some uh, giveaways to announce tonight, and Ooh. why don't we uh, get into that a little bit? Let's do it. Boom. So last week, we had the Vupu Drag that we were going to give away. So tonight, we're going we're gonna to give it away. Give it away now. Give it away now. Give it away! Uh, the Vupu Drag was from bradsvapor.com, and one lucky winner had a comment in the replay a certain catchphrase and Mark is going to read the catchphrase, pick a winner and we're going to congratulate you. You're going to contact me if you win on the Vapor Chronicles Facebook Messenger and I want you to send me your name, your address and your email address with a picture of your photo ID and I'll take care of it. I'll send it over to brad at bradsvapor.com and it'll all be taken care of. So best of luck to everybody. Mark, you're up. All right, here we go. Dropping the link, loading 275 comments, and the winner is going to be the Vapen Blazin, B-L-A-S-I-A-N. What did they say? They said, don't poo-poo on my voo-poo bread. <laughs> uh, great... Great show, boys. Manufacturers do need to be more honest about max wattages on devices. Congratulations, the vaping blazing. I'm probably saying that wrong, but it sounds right to me. Congratulations. Congratulations. There you go. So the Vupu Drag uh, Resin Edition, everybody seems to love the gene board that's in there, the gene chip. Yep. Awesome. So that should be an awesome mod. And uh, I think the resin thing, I think it's cool. I think it'll be cool for a while. But I think, like anything else, it'll have its time in the sun. And then it'll fade away into the into the fond memories of yesteryear once the next big thing comes out. You what know, will be the next big material? Like I don't know. Like, last year it was carbon fiber, right? So everything was carbon fiber. The SX, uh, the G-Class was carbon fiber. The Yee or the uh, all the Therions had carbon fiber. And before that, we had lots of leather. There was lots of leather pieces and parts. Well, last year, too, was leather and carbon fiber, basically. Yeah. It seems like resin sort of coming into its own this year. Uh, also, stab wood was really big last year. Do you mm -hmm. think stab wood's still desirable, but people prefer resin because it's more affordable and it looks similar? Yeah, I think... Actually, yeah, with the resin, because of the affordability. But uh, I, there's also the people that can afford it and they prefer the stab wood. Right. I see that Vapor DNA put up the uh Tug Life DNA two fifty resin mods on their site. They look nice as hell. Three hundred and fifty bucks though. They look pretty sweet though. I don't know, maybe aluminum boxes. I don't know of many aluminum boxes. That could be the next new thing. Is it, isn't the Woo Poo Drag an aluminum box? No, I think that's uh, like a zinc alloy. 
Like all the other. Feels like a zinc alloy, anyways. Yeah. Like a lightweight aluminum box would be. Well, no, because all the. No, never mind, because all the uh, custom box mods are aluminum, so that wouldn't. Never mind. They've done aluminum before. Like the all the vaporized nomad stuff and all that. That's all all aluminum. Boxes. What other materials could they use, and for it not to be expensive? I don't know. I'm wondering, like, what could be the a new like, something? A true carbon fiber mod would probably cost way too much money. Like all a, the carbon fiber. It takes a lot of time, also, to make carbon fiber real. You know. Yeah, they've done wood. They've done leather. They've done yeah. I think I don't know concrete box actually they have a box made out of stone i think i think big boy twisted 420 about what a year ago he reviewed a box mod that was made out of stone i think it looked heavy as hell <laughs> abs plastic somebody said glass there we go yeah drop that thing titanium I think a lot of it comes down to availability of the material, how easy it is to work with, the weight of it. Because remember, the heavier something is, the more it costs to ship it. So that also comes into play. Yeah. And um, durability, rust, tar how it tarnishes. You know, for things that are sort of mass-produced, I think durable material that's inexpensive and easy to make is really important for these companies. So that's why you see so many <clears throat> mods that are made out of the zinc alloy. It's like the best of everything, and it's cheap. Yeah. So, um, think alloy like a combination of just a bunch of shitty metals thrown together, or what is? Does anybody know what it is exactly? I'm sure, sure. Greg Paycheck and Chat could write up a whole thing on that. Take it away, Mister Paycheck. Yep. I actually like the wood, like the wood mods, like the one uh, from Watofo, that uh, Stentorian. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the mods like that is nice too. Wood. Yep. 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 How about really nice hardwoods that are really treated right? That would be There's really some really beautiful woods out there. Like if you look at the high-end furniture marketplace, woods are gorgeous, man. They're not cheap though. Uh, real quick, I just wanted to point out that the Pulse 24 bottom feeder RDA dual coil version Tony B project is in stock now from Brad'sVapor.com, and uh, you can pick it up today. It came in today on DHL, and he's shipping them out. So I wanted to let you know that. Also, you can also pick up some blue pucker, which is. Uh, Tony B's Sugar Lips line of e-liquid, and we're giving away two 100 milliliter bottles of Blue Pucker uh, next week on the show. So we're going to need you to comment something in the comment section below this video after we re-upload it, and I want you to say, Tony B makes my asshole pucker <laughs> with his sweet lips. Oh, man. Is that too much? No. no leave it. Tony B makes my asshole pucker with his sugar lips. <laughs> okay, there you go. So, congratulations to Tony for the pulse, for the for the brand new e-liquid line, and uh, nothing but the best for all of our friends. Does he have a whole line out, or is it one flavor, or do you know? That's all I know of so far. But uh, I, I, hope, I hope it gives sugar lips, because that's what it's called. That is sweet. Yeah, mm -hmm. literally, it is sweet. I'm actually amazed. I didn't expect Mark to be as much of a squonker as he is. He's really into squonk life. Look at him. I kind of have to be because I still want my dual squonkers to come out. Like I don't know. I just want two batteries. I like bigger mods. These mods are just so small. I like. I just like bigger stuff. But I can still. I can still enjoy them. You guys think we're going to see a lot of dual 18650 and dual 2700 squonk devices coming out, or do you think that that's not going to happen? It's probably not going to happen. Because i I seen one, someone sent me a link to one website that had them, and they were huge. They were big. Well, and I, you know, I don't see anybody enjoying something that big. Yeah. I kind of felt like when we had uh, these, when these dropped. Oh, yeah. They're just too fucking big. They're just too big. They're really yeah. plain. And and actually, before all of this, I want to point out a little something called the Movekin. Remember Movekin? Yep. That was over a year ago. 
that they were dropping products that squonked. That was a pretty innovative mod looking back now. Mm -hmm. Like way ahead of its time. They were forward thinking. It just, what was the biggest problem you guys had with that mod? For those that don't know, Movekin had a squonking mod that was dual 18650. It was regulated. And it also had a, uh, you could put a tank in it or you could remove the tank and put a squonking uh, bottle and make it a squonking mod. It was just really big. Yeah. That's what it was. And it, the drip tip, like the way the drip tip kind of worked, that little hole in the top was just kind of awkward. Yeah, the disguiser. The Movekin disguiser, that's right. Mark actually worked at the Movekin booth uh, in Miami, and he barely worked for them. He stood and there, he stared in the distance. Didn't you hit on a lot of the models that were there working at the booth with you? Yes, that's what I did actually all day long. They eventually called the cops on me for harassment, and uh, I was escorted off the property. Didn't uh, Move can also go out of business right after that event? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There's a lot of people in this community that feel like Mark had a had a part to play in Move can go out of business. I, it could be, who knows? But yeah, they did kind of short, go after go out of business shortly after that expo, and they did really well too because a lot of people were at the booth. They were loving that thing. I was surprised. I think also, yeah, go ahead, Mike. Uh, I was just saying, I'm trying to think how could they make a smaller dual 18650 or dual 2700 or 21700 with a squonk bottle? It's always going to be big. There's really, yeah. there's no way of uh, doing it differently. You know? <clears throat> I mean, I guess they could really, really engineer it so it's compact. Like if you use something like the Minikin version 2, how it's so compressed and short. And you figure it out some way to use a less e-liquid. You're going to have to sacrifice squonk bottle size and have less liquid in the squonk bottle to keep it small. Because the 510 pin has to come down and that connection has to be made. So I think if you want small, you want the 18650. But then it's going to be a pain in the ass filling. Yeah. I have a question, by the way. The bottle that you use to refill the boxer bottles, does that work on the boxer because there's an air outlet in the 510? Because when I go to squeeze, like when I screw it on and I squeeze, it starts to fill up the bottle, but air goes in there. There's a technique of doing it, of filling it up. If you go on uh, on YouTube, uh -huh. go on uh, Ginger Vapors, or I think it's Ginger Vapor, or it's either, or Boxer Mod. They have a actual uh, YouTube. How-to? And it shows you the proper way of using it. Okay. I knew I, knew I was doing something wrong because I was filling up the bottom bottle like a balloon. Mm -hmm. And every day I'd fill it up like a quarter of the way and I couldn't push any harder. And as soon as I let go, it would push the juice back up into the bottle. I think also Tony uh, Vapor Trail did a video on it. Showed how to do it, I think. I'm not sure on one of his videos. I almost thought there was like a pressure release valve or something that would let the air out. Ginger Vapor on YouTube. Yeah. He's got a tutorial on how to use it. All right, so check that out, guys. But that makes the refills a lot easier. Yeah. But I still think there's probably other solutions in the future that could be even better. Like, I want to be able to take my bottle like this and just open up a little sw slider and just fill it up on the go quickly and easily with no mess. Mm -hmm. That's what I want out of a squonker. Uh, okay. Question for Ginger Vapor, since we know he's watching. Any uh, plans on doing something a dual battery squonker? Hmm. The vaping bogans in the chat. What's up, Mr. Bogan? Sam the man. What is up, homie? We have. I love when Bogan jumps in because it's like Bogan for breakfast. <laughs> He's having his fucking little little breakfast pint. The Cheerios. He's having a pint for breakfast. Yep. Are we gonna wait for an answer from Ginger, Mike? Yeah, he wrote, "Hmm, might be." <laughs> yeah. The Bogan. Bloody cunt. Bogan. All right, guys. Said, well, he said in a DNA 300C, maybe. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So it's a little ways down the road, I guess. That would be sweet. Yeah. Well, if he's going to do it, he's going to do it uh, 
you know, obviously with the new DNA chip when it gets released. You know? Yeah, that would make sense. Mm -hmm. But maybe we'd like to see a mechanical dual battery swanker too. That would free up some space, right? Yeah, it would. Yeah. That's probably their, your best bet to keep the size down. Mechanical yeah. mechanical squonker, yeah. Yeah, the one I seen had a DNA 250, and I mean, the part was taking up about a quarter of the mod, and that's why it was so big. So if you have two batteries in parallel, let's just do this real quick. Hold on. So if I take this off, and I put another battery in here, and I put this back on... The best case scenario would be, unless you stack the batteries like and made it like a triangle to like a triad type of shape, this is the, this is the size you're looking at. Which is too big in your hand. Yeah. You know, that's what, I think, who was it that made something similar like that lazy now, vein? That's 2700s, though. So if you have dual 18650s, that might work in parallel on something like this. Yeah, it's the lazy vapor even, one was wide. It's still going to be wide. In your hand, it's going to be uncomfortable. It's not, would, it's not bad, to be honest with you, Mike. It's really not. It does not feel that bad. Not at all, actually. It actually yeah. feels, size-wise, very similar to, like, the Funky. A little bit wider. I don't know. I know from, what was the most triple 18650 DNAs that we had, Mark? Do you remember? Oh, what was that one... Oh, I forgot. I know the, twist, the twisted triple was one. No, you know what I'm saying? That thing was just a huge yep. fucking knot in your hand, you know? It was really so wide. It's, it's, and uh, that battery had. So you got to consider that being like two batteries, and the other battery would be the squonk bottle. But it'll be a little smaller because obviously the board. But if you go on with a board, it's going to be like that device. Yeah, it'd have to be like a triad shaped. But then you're at the Mookin. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like there's only so many ways you can fit batteries in mods. There's no there's no magic bullet for this. Yeah. Batteries are the same size and they don't change unless you get the only th what solves your problem is this. Solar paddles on your drip tip. Carry batteries with you. Yep. That's what What's I that? do. What's that? I always wish that they had like quick release battery. Remember what uh, Anakin had with the inner cells? That idea was brilliant because it was so quick and it wasn't implemented the best because they didn't lock in and they they just weren't picked up by every company, so people didn't jump on it. Mm -hmm. But the idea of having a quick release system for batteries like that, where you could actually have like a imagine if a company had like a dope holster that came with the mod and it held like two extra on the on the belt, and then you had your mod. That would work, something like that. Yeah, a lot of people don't want to walk around with a holster. <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> I want to wear. I want to carry all kinds of military type gear. Yeah. Yep. Let's see. Any good cases for twenty seven hundred? Yeah, yeah. I haven't seen really any cases. Just the ones that came with the the Oceanus. They came with these uh, things here for the twenty seven hundreds. They're going to be out soon. They'll have them. They'll be everywhere. Yeah, but I, I've been using my 2700 ones. You can fit, and they stay in there. Yeah, 26650 ones? 26650, yeah. The rubber ones, the ones that are made out of... I guess these are made out of what, uh, silicone? Yep. Yeah. You can use it on the 18650, but they tear. If you do it too many days in a row, your, your fingernail will catch it, and it's just too tight, and it'll tear. It's like a rectal tear. Yep. Anybody else, guys? It's 11.06. I think we've come to the end. I, I want to announce that, announce that not next week, but the week after, we will not be having a show for the vape team. We're going to be away. Mark probably will do something maybe on Facebook. Mark, maybe? Maybe. Probably, yeah. More than likely. Yeah. But we're not going to be on the show next week. Or we will be next week, but the week after. The week of the 17th. We're going to yes. be in Miami at the Vape Expo. So, 
Well, you guys will be live probably on Facebook down there, right? I'll be traveling probably around that time, or maybe just getting there. We'll see. We'll go on Facebook. We'll do some live stuff. Yeah. So if you're not a member of the Vape Team Facebook group, look for it. Ask to join, and we'll let you in. And the, the we think we have like almost ten thousand four hundred or 10, or eleven thousand members or something. I don't know. Yeah. But it's a great group. That's it. Socrates says Malaka Malaka. So there you go. <laughs> malaka Malaka. Malaka Malaka. And uh, somebody else is looking for the flat Earth people. So I hope they never come to the Vape Team channel. Yeah. No. Who knows? Maybe we'll do a live show from Miami. We'll, well, can we? Uh, I don't know. When are we f leaving? I forgot. I think we're leaving Thursday. No, I think we'll be off. We'll be taking off. Yep. So Mark says he might come last minute. I doubt it. But... Yeah, I might. I don't know. I'm still... I'd love to have you come. I would love to come. Oh, God, here we go. <laughs> There's just something about knowing that you're coming. Yes. It just makes me ready to receive you when you come. <laughs> I'll be waiting for you to come. I'm trying to come. <laughs> I had issues coming different times of my life so I could relate. But I'll tell you what, when I get the urge that I got to go, I come hard, man. At this age, it's hard to come, you know? You got a wife. Your wife might not even want you to come. Yeah. You know? She barely comes. So I got to do all the coming. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. Well, I, I want to thank all of you for coming. And I uh, hope everybody enjoyed it. The Vape Team 120. That's a wrap. Same vape time, same vape channel next Thursday night, 10 p.m. We love you. And uh, Mark, I hope you're still here as a guest, man. Malaka, Malaka. Thank you, guys. Much love. <laughs>say anything to the peeps no people are trying to get into the group would you like to say anything to the peeps what's up peeps mike vapes here <laughs> say bye really say, say bye mike bye mike